These three women top $50, 000, 000 up their skirts and $100, 000, 000 up their tops. They're stealing money out of the bank, but the money they're stealing is old. There are hundreds of millions of dollars of cash coming in and out of the Federal Reserve Bank every day. The banks collect the old bills and destroy them. Bridget's job is to clean up the trash. Bridget was jealous of the many dollars that were reduced to confetti. After all, her husband lost his job and she was left with the burden of making money. It's hard for anyone not to be impressed by so much money. But the bank's security system is no lie. There are security guards, surveillance, and they even have someone to keep time when they go to the bathroom. And the lock on the cash truck has only three keys in the whole bank. The keys are kept in the sorting room, the finance room, and finally the shredding room. But Bridget believes that there can be no absolute protection. One day, while shopping at the supermarket, she discovered that the locks used by the bank were identical to the locks sold in the supermarket. Her chance to make some money. Right. Next she started to look around while cleaning. One day she really found a blind spot for surveillance. So she started looking for a partner. She deliberately threw $10 on the floor and asked her colleague if it was his money. But not only did he say it wasn't his money, he had to hand it over voluntarily. It seems this guy is not a good partner either. After work, she approaches Nina, who is responsible for shredding the bills. As soon as she proposed the idea, Nina rejected it because Nina is a single mother. If Nina gets caught, her two kids will be sent to an orphanage. Bridget noticed this. The next day, she stuffed a lot of brochures for prestigious schools in Nina's locker. Nina looked at the brochures and realized that she alone could not provide a better education for her children. So Nina successfully joined Bridget's team. Now they needed a cash courier. They noticed Jackie. Jackie is diabetic and on medication to maintain her health. She had been living on a shoestring. When Bridget first proposed the idea, Jackie immediately said yes. After all, who wouldn't want to make more money? They chose a code of conduct to facilitate the operation, and that was to touch their eyebrows. The next day Bridget hid the lock in her waistband and got past security. So far, so good. At lunch, Bridget passes the code to Nina to confirm the operation, but she was met with a shake of the head from Jackie, because Jackie has a bad feeling about this. The two of them couldn't understand the superstition and curse it and left Jackie. As a result, at the end of that day, the line manager came to a surprise inspection. This made the two of them look at Jackie in a different light. The next day, the code word was given and the action began. The bank's cleaning lady secretly changed the locks on the transport truck to the same lock she bought. She then gave the truck's number to her accomplice Jackie. Jackie was responsible for transporting the money. Jackie took advantage of the blind spot in the elevator and then used the key Bridget gave her to unlock the car and take the money. Then she picked up a large amount of old money and threw it into the trash can behind her. The security guard in the surveillance room knew nothing about this. Nina went to the bathroom and retrieved the lock Bridget had replaced from the trash can. She took the opportunity to change the lock back when she was about to destroy the old money. This way, even if the money is missing, who knows? On the other hand, Bridget has already got the money in the trash can. The three of them went to the bathroom and stuffed all the stolen money into their clothes. They normally wouldn't be searched when they were off duty, but Jackie's pants waist revealed a little money. That's when the manager noticed from the surveillance that something was wrong. He rushed out and called Bridget's name. At this point Jackie realizes her mistake when Nina signals her to do so. She rushed to put the money back. The bank manager walked straight to Nina and picked up the work tag from the floor. He kindly gave it back to Bridget. The three of them almost fainted from shock. The three women went home and started counting the money right away. None of them expected to succeed at stealing $90.000 000 in the first operation. And then they got better and better at it. They stole more and more money, so they could hardly keep it in the house. But it was foolish not to spend the money. Nina sent the kids to the best schools. Jackie upgraded her music equipment. Bridget goes straight back to the life of a noble woman. With more and more money? Nina thinks it's time to stop stealing it. But Bridget and Jackie strongly disagree. Desire, once indulged, cannot be reclaimed. But the three women are no longer able to work together as a team. When Bridget tosses the lock to Nina, the key accidentally falls down the drain. But the only spare key is in Jackie's hand. The three of them didn't leave their phone numbers to avoid suspicion. Bridget had no choice but to call her husband. Her husband immediately informed Jackie's husband. By the time Jackie learned of the disappearance, she had already sent the transport truck to the shredding room. But now she couldn't make it back. Nina, on the other hand, was about to shred the car without the key. 
If there is no key they will be exposed. Could think Jackie had a solution. She pretended to argue with someone while she mixed the keys into the gum and threw them into the elevator. Bridget was downstairs cleaning and happened to have the keys in her hand. When she got to the smash room, the security guard was helping to unlock the door. Bridget immediately dismisses him and tosses the key to Nina. But the security guard finds out that Nina didn't use the bank's key to unlock the door. He chose to keep quiet because he had a crush on Nina. He didn't report them to the bank for stealing money. But he stopped Nina after work. He put his hand directly on her breast. The security guard told them to stop stealing money. Bridget saw this as a good opportunity to bring him in. Nina is persuaded by the two women to dress up and come to the security guard's house to negotiate. Eventually Nina finds a boyfriend and succeeds in getting him to join the game. Now they have a teammate for every part of the money theft. This makes them even more reckless because every time they raided the house, the security guard was informed in advance. Bridget was back to her old aristocratic self. She even bought a house, but she forgot that she was now a bank cleaning lady. How can a cleaning lady suddenly afford a villa? This also caught the attention of a federal investigator. He came to the bank and asked the president if the money had been stolen. The bank president said, I have the strictest security system in the United States. You're telling me the bank was burglarized? He threw the investigator out straight away. But everyone found out they were being watched. Now everyone panicked. They decided to destroy the bank notes overnight. But whether they burned the bills or crushed them and flushed them down the drain. They couldn't destroy the money fast enough to get arrested by the police. Bridget took a bag of money and ran out the back door. After a night of police interrogation, Jackie volunteered to take all the blame. In exchange for her acquittal, Nina, a single mother, was released. Do you think Bridget really ran off alone? No. She took the money, hired a lawyer and asked for bail for her teammates. Because the investigator had no evidence that their money had been stolen from the bank. What's even more irritating is that the bank president knew they stole from the bank but couldn't admit it because he couldn't shoot himself in the foot. He could not afford such serious consequences. Looking at Bridget, who was on the loose, the IRS said that even if you did not steal the money, you did not pay taxes, they were eventually acquitted. But all the money they stole was turned over. It was back to square one. But eight months later Bridget called her friends to the bar and brought them to the basement. It turns out Bridget had a way out for them. Every time she stole money, she would secretly save some of it. The money was enough to last them for the rest of their lives. The film, Mad Money, was released in 2008. At the end of the film, we see the humor behind the touching friendship. The sacrifices made for the sake of the family reunion of friends. The money that is selflessly shared for the sake of a better life together represents their goodness. You can subscribe and leave comments if you have any ideas. Thanks for watching. See you next time.